All right, here we are folks at Synergy Aircraft this evening. I wasn't going to do this, but this particular plug for the left upper wing root is teaching too many lessons to let it slip by. It's really remarkable. Um, this is what a plug looks like after it's been properly filled and sanded and is ready for its first coat of paint. Now, I will show, maybe if I can, the, uh, origin, the origin of this part, which is pre precisely CNC machined um, foam. But the nature of the foam that's used is low quality, low cost, nothing special. You have to take a couple of preparation steps to uh, make it work reasonably well, and we'd, we'd done that many times, so uh, not a lot of risk here. But I wanted to show just how precise uh, even a properly CNC machined plug uh, can be. Now what you're looking at there is actually not the weave of the fabric. That is the imprint of the fine nylon mesh that is used to infuse the uh, fiberglass component. So we put down five layers of fiberglass in this case and we did an infusion and the imprint through the peel ply of the mesh is what you see taking the fill of the micro fill that we that we put in there. So when you sand to it, you can really see that uh, you know it's pretty easy to get a consistent result even with a very aggressive grit that was sanded with a 36 grit paper, which is rougher than we normally ever use. Here, as a result of proper filling and sanding, we see a, a pattern of stripes, vertical stripes. Now believe it or not, that is the kind of error that's introduced by the software, both at the solid modeling level and more importantly at the level of the CNC machine. So you have an option when you're programming uh, G-code in a CNC machine to uh, you know, give you a certain level of variation tolerance. And we set ours quite low. Uh, the larger the part, the, the more tolerance you can give it. So in this case, we're a half a thousandth of an inch of tolerance. And what happened, uh, this is the first time I've actually seen it, is that we have half a thousandth of an inch of uh, difference in step height as we move along and the, and the code is interpolating for the Cartesian coordinate system. So you can't see that, even in the machine part, when you feel it with your hand, it's not there. Um, but when you fill it and sand it, it starts to emerge. So that's why we use a hard block. You don't want to use a soft block at the stage where you're creating shape. It's got to be hard. Generally uh, rigid as well, but not necessarily. Hard is the, is the key thing. The contour depends, determines whether or not it's, uh, it's rigid because a hard flexible item might be necessary to conform to a geometry that isn't uh, linear. In this case, we have a mostly linear condition. Right here at the end of this uh, item, we start to transition where the boom tube comes into the wing and we, the outer wing has a different, uh, a different upper surface dihedral, different lower surface dihedral, so there's some adjustments happening here, and that's what that white fill there is about. So you can't see this in the computer, but it's another case of understanding that what you're striving for in shape is for the shape to have the proper three-dimensional contours. And when you take a proper two-dimensional contour over here, and a proper two-dimensional contour over here, and a particular 3D contour of uh, taper and sweep, and a different 3D contour of taper and sweep out where I'm standing, the area that takes the adjustment in 3D space is here. And so we have uh, something where you can run your hand over it, and even though it was precisely machined, you say, huh, that's not quite right. Well, when you use a sand block and you run it across a laminar flow contour, you feel what the air feels. The resistance is very much an analog to the air resistance at high velocities. So when I stroke my hand over that with a sandpaper on it, 
and I feel it dip down, that would be a, a transition that would cause a trip to turbulence. In a similar way, as the flow comes along here and dives in behind, uh, behind the body as the body tapers, the fuselage body you can't see, as it tapers down, um, the airflow starts to flow in this general direction. And so this contour, uh, modeled perfectly in the computer, wonderful in CFD, when you get a sand block on it, you say, ah, oh, it could be better, and it will be. So interestingly enough, we also have these tracks. Now those tracks are the result of what you might have seen in the blue foam itself, which is a white and blue stripe pattern. That is just the blowing agent of the foam. Again, low cost uh, dock blocks are what we're using here for the form. And the difference in hardness uh, is captured in a difference in the machinability of the part. And so some of the softer material uh, tends to tear away, or the harder material tears away. I'm not sure which that is. But there's a difference in cell size, there's a difference in hardness, and consequently, uh, where those stripes are will reveal, in this case, a place where there's a contour difference. Now, it looks terrible. We don't like to show stuff like this. You know, it's like, wow, can't those guys machine? Well, I'm telling you, our machine is accurate and repeatable to less than a half a thousandth of an inch. It was precisely machined to the geometry we have. Then five layers of glass are put on and it's infused. And that's when things get a little interesting. So here we have some bulging as a result of uh, the joining of the two foam blocks. So there's some air in between the two foam blocks, not a perfect join. And the difference as you infuse something like that is that you can get some hydraulic action begin to form up and raise your fabric slightly. So here we had to sand the fabric down because it was raised by hydraulic action alongside the infusion uh, track. Also, you can obviously see this four inch wide infusion track. We used a product called Incafusion, and Incafusion is wonderful, but it will leave an imprint of the flow media that, uh, that is used to allow that flow to happen. Here at the back, we have a two inch wide track of ink effusion. The scratches that you see here are knife cuts because just to get that off of the part, in this case, a couple of days too late, uh, it can really be hard. So we cut it loose and we get on it and tear it. So here we have a place where we started and stopped the CNC machine. Different temperature that day by a few degrees results in something you can't see. You can't feel it but it is there. So people often, often wonder when you're aiming for a good quality finish, when you're aiming for laminar flow, can you and will you get those kind of results? And the answer is yes, you can, and yes, you will. Just be the air. Use a hard block. Use far more aggressive paper on those first cuts than you think. Use Direction of sweep that is the same as the airflow and direction of tool alignment. This is critical This is critical Direction of tool alignment that is proper and correct So know what your angle is of linearity of the airfoil that you happen to have Normally that's just straight out in line with the spar, but in the case of a swept or tapered wing new complexity uh, Use a long enough long enough block to get uh, consistency over a long length, but use a short enough block to not introduce problems where it will tend to dig in. And variation in that perfect angle that you're seeking is going to result in digging in at the tail. So lastly, uh, cut heavy. We used again 36 grit, and then I went over it with a 100 real quick with, uh, with another block. And you can see lots of scratches here, but the fact is, that's where you want to be right now. It's time to get on a guide coat, a heavy, thick layer of primer. Since this is a plug, I don't have to worry about it being a thin material, thin on, thin on material. Um, get down a guide coat of primer, and then we'll start to fill in sand. Once you can actually see what remains of trouble, um, almost invisible here, you have to really hunt and squint to find any places that are still low. But as soon as we put a coat of paint on them, they'll come screaming back out at us and we'll be able to see them 
we'll be able to fill them and finished. So uh, kind of an exciting day with this with this plug. It's gone along a lot faster than I thought. Uh, incredibly good geometry result. I'm happy about that. And yet, wow, does that look ugly or what? All right, well, thanks a lot. John signing off. More stuff to do soon.